get the nigga from? I'm still five five old pun. I put the crown on fed no. Superhero in the flesh. Even at my worst, I'm the best. You know what I mean? Mr. BJ in the building, man. We're out here kicking flame, man, on this good Monday, man. Out here kicking flame on this good Monday, man. Smoking good dope. Blessings to all, man. Big shout out to everybody who see this shit, you know what I'm talking about. But, um, yeah, man. You know the business, man. Mr. BJ, before rap ENT, man. Before rap or nothing, man. I would get straight to it, man. I really just came to get y'all folks to run down, man, on this motherfucking mixtape. <coughs> mixtape or album, what y'all think? Mixtape or album, shit, I kind of feel like they, um, I feel like they kind of wanting the same these days, you know what I mean? So, you know, whether you want to call it a mixtape, whether you want to call it an album, I don't give a damn. But what you need to know is that my first official motherfucking album coming, nigga. That motherfucker coming. And right now, we aiming for the first week in September, first Friday in September. And if I ain't mistaken, that's the second. So that'll be what? September 2nd. You know what I mean? That's what we aiming for. So that was you should be aiming for. You know what I mean? So September 2nd, man. Lock in with me, man. We dropping the first official album, man. And um, it's called Louise Grandson, man. You know what I mean? So, Louise Grandson, man. September 2nd, man. I need everybody to go check that shit out. Support that shit. You know what I mean? It's going to be a classic, man. Front to back. Louise Grandson, man. I'm talking about 15 tracks and no features. And I don't mean no disrespect because I fuck with a lot of niggas and I'm rocking with everybody doing their thing. I got niggas in my before rap camp. We doing our third this where I ain't do no features with nobody. And this shit personal for me. You know what I mean? I ain't do no features, man, because I'm, I'm, I'm Louise's only grandson, man. You know what I mean? Just came back out of retirement on these folks, man. Just came back out of retirement on these folk about two years ago, man. I'm just getting back in the groove of, um, shit, just getting back in the groove overall, you know what I mean? But most importantly, it's like, it's total control with this shit right now. I'm the CEO now, you know what I'm saying? And I'm in total control of everything. And when I say that shit, I don't mean that shit like, Oh, I'm trying to be on some cocky shit. I'm the motherfucking man. I say that shit because I did a lot with this music shit. You know what I'm saying? My partner, Eric, you know what I'm saying? Eric DeLone, me and him had a situation. You know what I'm saying? And that was like next level shit. You know what I'm saying? That was like the first time my mama kind of took this music shit serious when I met Eric DeLone. You know what I'm saying? Because um, he took us out to eat, took us to Rue Chris. Came and scooped us up in the Range Rover and shit. Took us to Ruth Chris and shit. And my auntie, and that was the first time they had rode in a luxury vehicle like that. And shit, went and had dinner that cost like two racks. You know what I mean? Like in the NBA or the NFL or some shit like that. That was like my first situation that was like next level. Like, you know what I mean? Shit fell through. <laughs> you know what I mean? The second shit was, you know, free my CEO, now I'm the CEO in our ENT situation. You know what I'm saying? That shit was the next level from the next level I was just telling y'all about. A lot of y'all got to see that shit. I ain't finna get into that too deep, but um, I said that to say this. I remember I was talking with my big brother Cello one time, and he was like, man, you ain't gonna be fully successful with this music shit until you do it yourself. You know what I'm saying? And, I remember when he told me that shit, I had a lot of shit going on. You know what I'm saying? I was on my dick, I was down bad. Money went where it wanted to be. I had relationship problems going on. I had a whole bunch of shit going on. Probably some of the same shit y'all be going through. My situation probably times 10, cause I'm just an intense ass nigga. 
But I remember Big Brother telling me, he said, man, this shit ain't gonna work until you do it yourself. And it fucked me up because I was so far away, you know what I'm saying, from doing it my motherfucking self. I was like, boy, ain't no way. But you dope. Here we is now. Back in 2020, I came back. I started before Rap ENT on my own paperwork, everything, everything you're supposed to do top to bottom, we licensed like that. Before Rap ENT, we a, we a, we a, we a real up and running company. And I came up with Before Rap ENT cause we was the niggas before rap, you know what I'm saying? This shit can't be on you, this shit gotta be in you. You know what I'm saying? So when you talk about Before Rap ENT, what me and my peoples represent, we represent this shit being inside of you instead of being on you, you know what I'm saying? It ain't about the motherfucking money, you know what I'm saying? It's more so about who you is as a person and being a stand-up guy, woman, whatever the fuck the situation is and staying ten told about whatever you believe in every day, day in, day out, you know what I'm saying? So that's where the Before Rap ENT shit come from, you know what I'm saying? And I said that to say this, 2022, two years later, you know, I done dropped singles and singles and singles. A lot of people been asking about my mixtape or the album, whatever the case may be. I just wanted to get back in the groove and drop songs and let people know, like, you know, I'm still that nigga. You know what I'm saying? Don't get this shit fucked up because y'all ain't seen from me, y'all ain't heard from me. I'm still that nigga. So I really been coming out just dropping singles and dropping singles and motherfuckers been damn near begging for the motherfucking mixtape. Begging for the motherfucking album. Cause they already know, like, you know, in the singles and, you know, I just, man, my music's special, man. You know what I mean? Like, I'm a fan of music, you know what I'm saying? So if you make good music, I rock with that shit. I don't give a fuck if you from the East Coast, from the West Coast, you know what I'm saying? The motherfucking South, the Midwest, nigga, like, I don't give a fuck where you from, you know what I'm saying? If you're making good music, like, that's, that's what the fuck I'm here for. You know what I'm saying? And my music always just been special on a on a different on a different type of level. You know what I'm saying? People kinda cling to it. They know it's real. You know what I'm saying? I don't cut no corners. You know what I'm saying? I'm street. I'm smart. You know what I'm saying? I know what the fuck going on in the hood. You know what I'm saying? I know what the fuck going on with the motherfucking government. You know what I'm saying? Like I ain't just write about everything and I don't know everything, but you know, I just got a keen sense about, you know, what the fuck going on. Like my mind always, it don't necessarily get stuck on what's in front of you. I'm always more so, you know, what's pulling the strings for this shit to be happening in front of you. You know what I mean? So, you know, everybody kind of been begging for the mixtape. They been begging for the album and now we here. You know what I'm saying? So September 2nd, September motherfucking 2nd, Louise's grandson. And I came up with that concept, you know what I mean? If you don't know, rest in peace, Louise Isaac. You know what I mean? Louise is obviously my grandma. If I'm saying Louise's grandson. Yeah, man, Louise is my grandma. And she passed away in 1996, a long ass time ago. Shit, long story short, you know, my mama got pregnant with me when she was 16. She had me when she was 17. She still had a full senior year to go, you know what I mean? So I was born on July 27th. My birthday just passed, too. But um, I was born July 27th. My mama went back to school that August to start her senior year. A 13-year-old girl with a goddamn uh, or an infant, you know what I mean? And shit, my mama, you know, my mama got there, graduated on time, you know what I mean? She worked, you know what I mean? So obviously she didn't need some motherfucking help. So who would help my mama? Louise. You know what I'm saying? So me and my me and my grandma had a real special relationship. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like shit, everybody got a special relationship with their grandma, especially in the, the black community, how we kind of come up. You know what I'm saying? Some of our parents be younger. Some of them might not have their head on straight. Some of them might just need help. Hell, even if you do got grade A parents, because I got a grade A mama, but you know, you can't replace no grandma, especially a grandma that's, you know, doing the extras and going 
above and beyond like my grandma did. But I spent a lot of time with my grandma just on the strength that my mama had to go to school, my mama had to go to work, you know what I mean? So I spent a lot of time, you know, with my grandma. Then my mama was younger and she pretty much still got to live her life because my grandma ain't, she, you know, she ain't mine like <clears throat> taking care of me when my mama wanted to go have fun and do this or go handle some business or whatever the case may be. So me and my grandma was like, like locked in. You know what I mean? To be honest with you, when my grandma passed away in, in 96, that was kind of like, it was almost like that was the last time I was a little kid. You know what I'm saying? Like, shit was real after that. It wasn't no, you know what I mean? It was almost like sixth grade, <laughs> 12 years old, nigga went from caring about, you know, I guess the normal shit little kids care about far as going outside and playing and shit like that to kind of like going into like a grown person type of depression at a young age you know what i mean so my grandma passing away like affected me heavily like shit to be honest that's how i started smoking weed to be honest you know what i'm saying i had to find something to cope with you know what i mean so um to be honest that's how i started smoking weed you know what i'm saying and i ain't never i ain't looked back since <laughs> yeah doing a little interview and shit.